I pulled up outside the address for my last fare for the day and beeped the horn. When no one came out, I beeped again, half deciding I would leave, as it was the last ride and I was weary. But I changed my mind and walked up to the front door and rang the bell. I heard a faint voice call out, Just a minute followed by a scraping noise as though someone was being dragged towards the door. Then the door slowly opened and there stood an old and frail lady wearing an outfit that looked to come from a 1940s film. I could see beyond her tiny frame that the furniture had all been covered with sheets with nothing else visible. Could you carry my bag out to the car, she asked. I took the small suitcase from her to the cab and then returned to help her down the front steps. She took my arm and we walked slowly towards the curb. She kept thanking me for my kindness. It's nothing, I told her. I just try to treat my passengers the way I would want my mother to be treated. Oh, you're such a kind person, she said. She handed me a printed address and asked me, could you drive through downtown? It's not the shortest way, I told her. Oh, I don't mind, she said. I'm in no hurry. I'm on my way to a hospice. I looked into the rearview mirror and caught her eye. She said, I don't have any family left. And in a soft voice continued, the doctor says, I don't have very long to live. Without her noticing, I silently reached over and turned off the taxi meter. After asking her which route she would like me to take, we drove around the city for two hours. We drove past a building she pointed out that had been somewhere where she had her first job as a lift attendant. We meandered through a neighbourhood she said had been their first home when she was newly married. A warehouse further along had once been a ballroom where she had danced as a young girl. It brought back so many memories for her as we sat outside in silence. Sometimes she would ask me to stop outside a house or a building and she would stare off into the distance, remembering. Then she suddenly said, I am tired, let's go now. So we drove to the address she had given me, a low set group of buildings, and as we pulled up, uniformed staff were quickly beside us, waiting with a wheelchair to assist her. I opened the boot and took out her small suitcase and she thanked me and asked how much she owed for the trip. I told her nothing, as she kept insisting I needed to earn money to make a living. There's plenty more passengers, I told her. Instinctively, I reached down and gave her frail body a hug. She clung to me tightly for a moment. You gave an old woman a little moment of joy, she said. Thank you. There was nothing more for us to say, and bidding her farewell, I walked out into the dawning light, as by now the sun was rising. Behind me I heard the door of the hospice close. It seemed as though it was the ending of her life to me. Not wanting to go home yet, I drove around deep in thought, asking myself about the what ifs. What if the driver who had turned up had been impatient or angry? Her experience would not have been a pleasant one. What if I had driven away after she didn't come out quick enough? What if I'd been in a bad mood and not spoken with her? It led me to ponder, how many opportunities had I missed to make a difference in someone's life? People so often become obsessed with life's big moments that the small ones are trampled on. When that woman hugged me and said that I had brought her a moment of joy, it made me look at the possibility that I had been placed on this earth for the sole purpose of providing her with her last ride.